who sees all beings in his own self, and his own self in all beings, loses fear. From the Ishupanishad. Welcome to Self Talk. I'm Rachel Astarte. Today I'd like to talk to you about fear. Many of us are dealing with fear right now. We are in the middle of this pandemic illness, and it can be frightening. Our lives have changed. We're watching the news, and it's very frightening, and not a lot of good news is happening. We go to the stores, and the shelves are empty, and that's kind of spooky and weird. Maybe we know some people who are ill. We're being asked not to touch each other or even be around each other, which is also very alien to us as social beings. In terms of the illness making its way through our neighbors and our family, it's really important that we do take care. Please do follow the recommendations of the medical professionals to keep safe, wash your hands, do your social distancing. The virus, like so many other viruses and other illnesses, is very concerning. But there is another virus that can come in conjunction with the one that's more obvious, and that's fear. Fear spreads even more quickly and can be as dangerous, if not more so. Physiologically, fear stimulates our fight or flight response, and then cortisol is released. And when we stay in that state, in that sympathetic response state, inflammation results. And inflammation reduces our immune system and makes us more susceptible to illnesses of all kinds. So you can see that staying in a state of fight or flight or fear actually can make our chances of getting any illness much higher. So how do we do this? How do we straddle these two experiences, the reality of this virus and the reality of the fear that it raises in us. Because some of that fear is important. It's that fight or flight response that's allowing us to take measures to protect ourselves. There is a threat and we are dealing with the threat, but the important thing is to keep it in check. So both of them, the virus and the fear, are present in this reality. So we may wish to return to our spiritual practices for some guidance here. We have an understanding that everything is interconnected. From the Big Bang to now, we are all living beings that are siblings in a way. We all came from the same place. And that includes viruses. They are living beings that, like us, are just programmed to survive. It's important to stay safe. Not all living beings are innocuous. I'm not going to go into the jungle and hug a tiger. That would be unwise. So you don't want to be flip about what's happening. But there is an absolute danger in falling into an us-versus-them mentality. The virus versus us. Or even, if we do fall ill, that there's this thing that has taken control of us. Something separate. What we're being called to do right now is reconfigure our priorities. For those of you who are aware of Mercury retrograde, when Mercury is in retrograde, everything goes wonky, your computers break, and travel's messed up. It's communication, for the most part, that gets into trouble. So what are we supposed to do when Mercury is in retrograde? Give up? No. We go in, and we continue projects that we've previously started. In a way, that's what we are being asked to do right now. Social distancing, paradoxically, allows us to do that. To go inside, literally and figuratively. Return to the self. Do your work. Take some time to do things that you haven't had a chance to do. Whether it's meditation, or learning a new language, or starting a journal practice. Spending some time with your family. All of these things help support our highest self. And remember that taking time for self is not selfish. We need to do this so that we can gather energy for when we do return to the world of others. 
So this is a wonderful time for us to do that. It's an excellent opportunity. Go inside. Do your beautiful work. If you want connection, it's a great time to get connected to your family again, should they be living with you. And if you're alone and you're starting to feel lonely, you may wish to create some online gatherings so that you can stay connected to your community. So we do this inner work now, and when the storm breaks, we may have this opportunity to rejoin each other in a new way, in a more grounded way, more centered in ourselves, more able to see self in the other. We don't want to make light of the seriousness of this disease that's going around right now. But there are two ways to look at it. One is from a place of fear, and another is from a place of love. If we look at this from a place of love, look at what is being stripped away as a blessing, in other words, all the distractions and the frivolities that we've taken for granted, and we see this as an opportunity to go in and get peaceful, then we have an opportunity to emerge stronger, collectively. Now, it's true that so many people are dying, and it does appear that there is a mass culling going on right now. But perhaps we could look at it not as a culling, but as a calling. A calling to go in, and a calling to do our inner work. We may very well find that it doesn't take that much to be satisfied in our lives. So as we move through this time collectively, you may consider seeing the changes that we are all experiencing from a love perspective. How can you be enriched by this experience? How can you ultimately enrich others by doing the work internally, within your soul, within your life, within yourself? Stay safe. Be gentle with yourself. And until next time, many blessings on your path. Thank you for joining me on Self Talk. Aho.